How's it going guys? Hope you're having a great day. This is Art of Zod with a speed paint video of the baby hippo with commentary. Now this video is just going to be briefly covering the start and finish of this particular study piece. Uh, if there's anything I've missed out or you're unsure about, please hit them in the comments below. But without further ado, let's begin. So I start the study off with a frame and I keep the frame size similar to the reference. This way it's good for me to capture the composition and the proportions of the of the hippo and I and then from there on I start drawing in the overall shape so using kind of like kind of the negative space elements here so looking at the shape looking at the negative space behind it I try to capture the shape itself the overall shape once I'm happy with that then I start moving into the sub shapes that are inside the hippo so this is where you can start comparing the horizontal and vertical relationships that you see on the edges and compare to compare those to what you see on the inside. I start making changes in the feet here because I wasn't sure if that was in line with the lower feet. So the front feet at the back for the four feet. I'll try to take as long as I can on doing sketches, but I usually keep it within 20 minutes. So now I'll move on to the blocking of the background. I'm keeping it relatively simple here because the background isn't really the most important part but I just get this down first because it's important to get the background down first before you start working on the on the hippo itself. So I've pushed away, I've turned off the layer for the background just so I can block in the hippo itself. As you can see I tend to use a flat color which is kind of in between not too dark and not too bright. So now I start to apply the colors on top of the base. If you want to, you can use an, a new layer and, and do it like that, but I've decided to go on to painting directly onto the layer, but then I noticed I've done that, so I've started making a new layer on top and started to paint over that, so now I have the shading on top of it now. This is where I start to fade away the line work so I can just focus on looking at the shapes that I see in color and apply them directly to the hippo. So blocking in takes, I'd say it's the longest part of the process because you're spending more time looking, you're spending more time picking colors and applying those colors that you see. It's okay to make mistake judgments on what color you see because sometimes it might not be the color that you're actually looking at. When you make the stroke, you realize that it doesn't match the color of the reference and that's fine. You should always spend as much as you can, much time as you can, doing these these observation studies on the color and make sure the color you pick is the right color. So I'm applying more color on top of color here just to get as close as possible to the reference. I sometimes enjoy painting one color and then applying another color on top of it and see how that looks and just keep just keep applying layers on layer, layers and layers of color until I see something that kind of resembles the reference and then I move on to the next next area which will be another part of the body because it's sometimes if you spend too much time on one area you can get a bit locked into doing one particular thing for so long so it's always good to just to take a step back and try go go somewhere else and try painting that and finishing that off to, or bringing that up to a to level that you've got one area at so everything looks unified. So I'm working on the bottom of the feet here and the underbelly. So I spent quite some time on the face here because the face is the point of interest and I want to make sure that is kind of spot on or kind of there. And the brush I'm using here is by Stefan Wuther. I will link his uh, brush set in the comments below if anyone wishes to use it. It has a nice grungy effect which is really nice, really nice for painting. So I just fixed the head there because I noticed it was off angle. This is one of the nice things about 
painting because once you start painting the the shapes in and, and the color in and everything then you start moving things around and what i also did there which you may not have seen is i, I flattened the shade down on, onto the base layer and then i moved the head because obviously you can't you cannot move separate layers around so i was I, once you're once you're happy with it then you're committed to it flatten it down and move on if you think if you want to keep a backup of it you, you can always do so keep keep a backup of your layers and then make a new set of layers and then merge them down and then apply the changes where necessary. So one of the problems I had with this piece, which when I was working on it is under the neck, trying to find the value, trying to find what color it is, because there is hints of green, there's hints of blue, and that's all coming from the reflections and the environmental lighting. This is why it's important to get the background down first because that reflects what the hippo's lighting is without you tend to make second guesses or if you did the hippo first and did the background next afterwards you realize that the colors may not match up so everything has to become everything has to be harmonious everything has to work in harmony so i'm getting close to rendering now i still use the 50% uh, color capture method which i may try and do a video on because I th it's something that i always do often nowadays but don't often show it. it obviously on the speed painting it's relatively quick to see how it works but it's i found it's pretty handy because it's a uh, great way to capture color without playing around with the palette too much again it's a, it's something that should be done when you're familiar with using the right colors rather than just using this kind of approach so i did a quick color fix there you can use filters and stuff just to rebalance color if you think it's not correct you can always play around with this so when, when doing these studies don't be forced to using one particular way of doing things try to use as much as you can of your of the program that you're using. If you're using Photoshop, if you're using Psy, Clip Studio Paint, use all the tools to your advantage because that's what digital painting is about, using tools to advantage. But don't forget the fundamentals, which is looking at color and capturing color. That's what matters the most. Never cheat. So now I've slowly moved into rendering or blending, whichever you want to call it i call it rendering sometimes i sometimes call it blending doesn't really matter so what i do is i use more pressure sensitivity brushes so in this case i'm using the same scott with the brush again and i've turned the pressure sensitivity on and i'm locking down the opacity to certain levels usually 80 percent i sometimes keep it 100 percent and then rely on the pressure to give me the opacity i need so this way i can press as hard as I want or light as I want to achieve that smooth blending but I don't want to do too much blending that's the thing that's the important part of blending never go too far think about what you're blending how much to blend because sometimes the blocking in approach which is what we spent doing at the beginning can sometimes be enough to portray what the final version looks like so in this case the, the hippo's face it doesn't need that much blending only small areas small areas where two colors can come together you can apply a bit of blending there just to bring them together same with under the neck there under the belly areas where edges can be closed in because sometimes when you paint with hard edge color you may see some edges and that's where you can apply some light blending just to bring them together i've said this before in other videos where you should always think about how much you blend. Don't over blend things. Now that the blending's done, I've now just working on the background. And then after that, I will just do some final touches here and there. This is the final touching part is, which is where you can do the details. It's mostly focused on the face. And this is where you can spend as long as you want. You can spend as long as you want doing all the fun stuff, doing the little bits of detail, any little points of interest on the face, which is the focal point. 
this is where the final 10% of the work should be applied. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to end the commentary here. If you have any questions, hit them in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and enjoy the rest of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more weekly video updates. See you soon.